Since the death, the resurrection and the ascension of Jesus Christ, Christianity has spread to every corner of the earth. Over 2,000 years have passed where we still wait in joyful hope for the coming of our Saviour. We have been promised that he will return. And so, since the Apostles until now, there have been many who believe that they are living in the times where the return of Jesus is imminent. The Gospel message has been spread through these past two millennia by every possible means. The Church has stood since it was institutionalised by Christ himself. Throughout many lands and cultures and throughout some of the darkest periods in history. It has been through such times that we have been given extra help and graces to preserve in our faith. Such grace has been no other than the phenomena of reported apparitions of the Blessed Virgin Mary, the Mother of God. Yet for something like this to happen in our time, why are we not being made aware of it? Why does the modern day world seem oblivious to this? I wish to speak of such events and bring an alert to the times in which we are currently living. I simply would like to highlight the main story of certain apparitions and messages given to humanity from God through his mother. Together with sacred scripture and teaching authority of the Catholic Church, such events and messages are clearly an extra help for us to live out our faith more fully. I believe that the times we live in we are headed to another great war, a great awakening at how mankind has forgotten God and fallen further into trouble through our own actions. God has been sending us clear messages throughout the past century and I will now convey this to you. Firstly, I wish to quickly highlight is Our Lady of Good Success at Quito, Ecuador. Very early in the morning of February 2nd, 1594, Mother Mariana was praying in the upper choir of the convent where she first had an apparition of the Blessed Virgin Mary, who identified herself as the Lady of Good Success, the Queen of Heaven and Earth. It wasn't until early in the morning of January 21st, 1610, Mother Mariana was favoured by an apparition of the Archangels, St. Michael, St. Gabriel and St. Raphael. Then Our Lady appeared and related many predictions. Thus I make it known to you that from the end of the 19th century and shortly after the middle of the 20th century, in what is today the colony and will then be the Republic of Ecuador, the passions will erupt and there will be a total corruption of customs. For Satan will reign almost completely by means of the Masonic sects. They will focus principally on the children in order to sustain this general corruption. Woe to the children of these times. It will be difficult to receive the sacrament of baptism and also that of confirmation. Often during this epoch the enemies of Jesus Christ, instigated by the devil, will steal consecrated hosts from the churches so that they might profane the Eucharistic species. As for the sacrament of matrimony, it will be attacked and deeply profaned. The Catholic spirit will rapidly decay. The precious light of the faith will gradually be extinguished. 
Added to this will be the effects of secular education, which will be one reason for the dearth of priestly and religious vocations. The sacrament of holy orders will be ridiculed, oppressed and despised. The devil will try to persecute the ministers of the Lord in every possible way. He will labour with cruel and subtle astuteness to deviate them from the spirit of their vocation and will corrupt many of them. These depraved priests who will scandalise the Christian people will make the hatred of bad Catholics and the enemies of the Roman Catholic and Apostolic Church fall upon all priests. Further, in these unhappy times there will be unbridled luxury, which will ensnare the rest into sin and conquer innumerable frivolous souls who will be lost. Innocence will almost no longer be found in children, nor modesty in women. In this supreme moment of need of the church, the one who should speak will fall silent. There are further messages given to Mother Mariana, but these are the main highlighted parts I wish to show. It is clear to all upon reading these messages that it is not just Ecuador, but the entire world that has fallen into the cesspool. So how can an unliving in the year 1610 know what would be happening in 350 years time? Note that after the mid 20th century, the passions will erupt. How many can remember the so-called swing in 60s? Family values declined as free love reigned. Drugs, sex, music, everything became easily ready. And in this time, this prophecy 350 years later has come true. Let's go closer to the protected times and piece this together. Pope Leo XIII had a vision on October 13th, 1884, as he finished celebrating his normal daily mass in his private Vatican chapel, attended by a few cardinals and the members of the Vatican staff, when he suddenly stopped at the foot of the altar. He stood there for about 10 minutes as if in a trance, his face ashen white. Then going immediately from the chapel to his office, he composed the prayer to St. Michael with instructions for it to be said after all low masses everywhere. When asked what had happened, he explained that it, as he was about to leave the foot of the altar, he suddenly heard voices, two voices, one kind and gentle, the other guttural and harsh. They seemed to come from near the tabernacle. As he listened, he heard the following conversation. The guttural voice and the voice of Satan in his pride boasted to our Lord, saying, I can destroy your church. And the gentle voice of our Lord replied, You can? Then go ahead and do so. Satan said, To do so, I need more time and more power. And the Lord said, How much time, how much power? Satan responded, Seventy-five to one hundred years and a greater power over those who will give themselves over to my service. Our Lord said to him, You have the time, you will have the power. Do with them what you will. Remember that after the vision, Pope Leo XIII immediately wrote down the prayer to St. Michael to help us overcome the devil in his quest. He instructed that it to be, had to be said after every low mass, the fact that we see a battle between heaven and hell, between Michael and Satan, should make us automatically think of the book of Revelation, the last book in the Holy Bible. We will connect to this shortly, but let's continue with one more, the one which I call the cornerstone of Marian apparitions and the central piece of the jigsaw. Fatima, Portugal. By 1916, World War I was underway. On March 1916, Germany declared war in Portugal. A few months later in Fatima, three young shepherd children, Lucia dos Santos, age 10, and her cousins, Francisco and Jacinta Marto, age 9 and 7, saw an angel while attending the family flocks. They described him as a young man approaching them around the age of 15. 
He was as white as snow, of great beauty, and made as transparent as crystal by the sun. On his first of three appearances to the children, he greeted them, saying, Do not be afraid, I am the angel of peace. Pray with me. He knelt, bending his forehead to the ground, and with a supernatural impulse the children did the same, repeating the words they heard him say. My God, I believe, I adore, I hope, and I love you. I ask pardon for those who do not believe, do not adore, do not hope, and do not love you. After repeating this prayer three times, the angel rose and said to them, Pray in this way, the hearts of Jesus and Mary are ready to listen to you. In the autumn, as the children were praying, they saw the angel holding a chalice in his left hand, while over it in the air was a Eucharistic host. Drops of blood were falling from the host into the chalice. The angel left the chalice and the host suspended in the air and knelt with the children and taught them the following prayer. Most Holy Trinity, Father, Son and Holy Spirit, I adore you profoundly and I offer you the most precious body, blood, soul and divinity of Jesus Christ present in all the tabernacles of the world in reparation for the outrages sacrileges and indifferences by which he is offended, and by the infinite merits of his most sacred heart and the immaculate heart of Mary, I beg the conversion of poor sinners. The angel then gave the host to Lucia and the contents of the chalice to Jacinta and Francisco, saying, Eat and drink the body and blood of Jesus Christ, terribly outraged by the ingratitude of men. Offer reparation for their sakes and console God. The appearances of the angel indicate a preparation for the children, a preparation for the following year where the Blessed Mother of God herself would appear to them. There is a clear message from the angel to all of us, the reality of the true presence of Jesus himself in the Holy Eucharist, the reality of sin and how through penance and sacrifice we can console God and help people turn back to him. There is a recurring theme throughout these several apparitions and I wish to make it more clear and fitting as we progress. On the following year the Blessed Virgin Mary appeared to the children. This is the most famous part that is more commonly known to people. During the months of May to October, on the 13th day of each of these six months, Our Lady gave the children three secrets amongst her messages that was for the future of the world. She also promised that on October 13th, her last appearance, she would give the people a sign that would prove that she had been appearing. So May 13th is the first day of the apparition. While the children were playing, they they saw something like a flash of lightning. Thinking that a storm was approaching, they hurried with their sheep down the slope from where they were grazing. Then another flash occurred and they saw a lady standing on top of a small oak tree. Lucia later described her as dressed in white, shining brighter than the sun, giving out rays of clear and intense light like a crystal goblet full of water when the fairy sun passes through it. The lady asked them to come forward and not be afraid. She asked them to come to the same place at the same time for the next six months where she would tell them who she was and what she wanted of them. She asked them to continue saying the rosary daily. Upon answering Lucia's questions, she told her that she will take Jacinta and Francisco to heaven soon, but Lucia herself must remain to do her work. She told Lucia that Jesus wishes to establish devotion to her Immaculate Heart, and to those who embrace it, she promised salvation and God will love these souls like flowers which she herself will put by his throne to adorn it. She also asked for a special prayer after each decade of the rosary, which is as follows. O my Jesus, forgive us our sins, save us from the fires of hell. Lead all souls to heaven, especially those in most need of your mercy. On Friday, July 13th, the next apparition occurred. By this point, word had been rapidly spreading of these alleged apparitions, and between three to four thousand people were present. 
This was the day that Our Lady promised the miracle for October 13th. She then showed the children the reality of hell and stated the following message to them. You have seen hell where the souls of poor sinners go. It is to save them that God wishes to establish in the world devotion to my Immaculate Heart. If you do what I tell you, many souls will be saved and there will be peace. This war will end, but if men do not refrain from offending God, another and more terrible war will begin during the pontificate of Pius XI. When you see a night that is lit by a strange and unknown light, you will know that it is a sign of, from God giving to you that he is about to punish the world with war and with hunger and by the persecution of the Church and the Holy Father. To prevent this I shall come to the world to ask that Russia be consecrated to my Immaculate Heart and I shall ask that on the first Saturday of every month communions of reparation be made in atonement for the sins of the world. If my wishes are fulfilled, Russia will be converted and there will be peace. If not, then Russia will spread her errors throughout the world, bring in new wars and persecution of the Church, the good will be martyred and the Holy Father will have much to suffer. Certain nations will be annihilated, but in the end my Immaculate Heart will triumph. The Holy Father will consecrate Russia to me and she will be converted and the whole world will enjoy a period of peace. In Portugal, the faith will always be preserved. This message itself is immense and full of much information that must be slowly digested. Once we cover the whole story of Fatima in this highlighted version, we will then look at the main points and connect them together. Remember that this message speaks of a clear future of what will happen. Did these events actually happen as foretold? We will see shortly. But continuing on. When October 13th finally arrived, there was an estimated 70,000 people at the site of the apparitions. They travelled from all areas of the land and afar upon hearing of the apparitions and the promised miracle. Torrential rain left them soaked and cold for hours. Tempers were flared and impatience grew. Rioting was imminent. When Our Lady appeared to the children, she confirmed herself as the Lady of the Rosary. She told them the war will end soon and the soldiers would return home and urge them to continue to pray constantly so to obtain peace for the world and the conversion of sinners. She asked for a chapel to be built in her honour. Then as promised she performed the miracle for all to see. The miracle is documented as follows. As the Lady of the Rosary rises towards the east, she turns the palms of her hands towards the dark sky. While the rain had stopped, dark clouds continued to obscure the sun, which suddenly bursts through them and is seen to be a soft spinning disk of silver. The people saw the sun as if it was spinning and pulsating. Different colours radiated from it onto the people and trees. It then appeared to plummet towards the earth. Many ran in terror, believing it was the end of the world. Some stayed and prayed with fear and penance. Then, after a period, the sun returned to its normal state. The drenched, muddy ground was completely dry. The clothes of the people were also dry and many other miracles had taken place, such as hearings of bodily ailments, but more importantly, conversions happened. The people believed. From this point, two distinct apparitions were seen, that of the phenomenon of the sun seen by 70,000 people and the other that was only seen by the children alone at the exact same time. Lucia described it later in her memoirs. After Our Lady had disappeared into the immense distance of the firmament, we beheld St. Joseph with the child Jesus and Our Lady robed in white with a blue mantle. Beside the sun, St. Joseph and the child Jesus seemed to bless the world, for they traced the sign of the cross with their hands. When, a little later, this apparition disappeared, I saw Our Lord and Our Lady. It seemed to me to that it was Our Lady of Sorrows. 
Our Lord appeared to bless the world in the same manner as St. Joseph had done. This apparition also vanished, and I saw Our Lady once more, this time resembling Our Lady of Carmel. This would be the last of the apparitions of Fatima for Jacinta and Francisco. However, for Lucia, Our Lady would return a seventh time in 1920, as she had promised the previous May. At that time, Lucia would be praying in the cova before leaving Fatima for a girls' boarding school. Our Lady would come to urge her to dedicate herself wholly to God. Lucia became a religious sister, finally setting as a displaced Carmelite nun, where she dedicated her life to God through prayer and service. She later wrote her memoirs during this time and also received other messages from her Blessed Mother, which still echoed the importance of her plan which she began in Fatima. But did that prophesied strange light occur, which Our Lady said would be the sign that God was about to punish the world for its crimes? What does Russia have to do with Fatima? Why is Russia singled out to be the most important country here? Take an account of what was foretold. Did these things occur? Let's see. In late January of 1938, there was an amazing aurora seen across the whole of Europe and as far south as southern Australia, Sicily, Portugal and across the Atlantic to Bermuda and southern California. Lucia saw this herself from her room in her convent and knew it was the sign Our Lady had told her about back in 1917. It was this time of the phenomena that Hitler was having a secret meeting with his top military commanders of his plans of war. Two months later, he invaded Austria, and as we know, World War II occurred. The Pope during this time was Pope Pius XI. Just as Our Lady of Fatima foretold, back in 1917 to 10-year-old Lucia. The 20th century seems to be the century where the devil truly has reigned. Two world wars, the mid-20th century saw the destruction of morals and anything godly. After World War II, Russia re-amplified its religious persecutions in various forms as already mentioned. Abortion became legal throughout the nations as a backup plan for any failed contraceptive methods. The Church entered a period of darkness and confusion after the Second Vatican Council and it's only in the last ten years especially that we have learned of the evil that, that had entered the Church in this time period. Until now, with all the clerical abuse, everything foretold by our Blessed Mother in 1610 in Ecuador and in 1917 at Fatima has come true as she said it would. During such a reign, Communism spread to many parts of the world. The Soviet Union itself suppressed and persecuted various forms of Christianity to different extents depending on the particular era. Soviet Marxist-Leninism policy consistently advocated the control, suppression and the elimination of religious beliefs and actively encouraged atheism during its implementation in the Soviet Union. The state was committed to the destruction of religion and destroyed churches, mosques and temples, ridiculed, harassed, incarcerated and executed religious leaders, flooded the schools and media with atheistic teachings and generally promoted atheism as the truth that society should accept. The total number of Christian victims of Soviet state atheistic policies has been estimated to range between 12 to 20 million, 50,000 of those being clergymen of the church. Members of the church hierarchy were jailed or forced out, their places taken by docile clergy, of many of whom had ties with the KGB. With such infiltration, especially around the mid-20th century, it would be irrational to jump to certain conclusions with unfounded evidence. But, at the same time, it's not irrational to think that such actions by Russia to infiltrate the Vatican around this time period coincidentally ties in with a time period of the Second Vatican Council. 
and the same time period already mentioned of the, the foretold destruction and persecutions and the time of testing humanity in general with Our Lady of Good Success as she predicted 350 years earlier. Let's not forget the third secret of Fatima here either. The vision itself entails everything already discussed plus more. Let's have a look at the image itself. We saw an angel with a flaming sword on his left hand. Flashing, it gave out flames that looked as though they would set the world on fire. But they died out in contact with the splendour that Our Lady radiated towards him from her right hand. Pointing to the earth with his right hand, the angel cried out in a loud voice, Penance! 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 And we saw in an immense light at his God, something similar to how people appear in a mirror when they pass in front of it. A bishop dressed in white, we had the impression that it was the Holy Father. Our other bishops, priests, men and women religious, going up a steep mountain, at the top of which there was a big cross of rough-hewn rough trunks as of a cork tree with the bark. Before reaching there, the Holy Father passed through a big city half in ruins and half trembling with halting step. Afflicted with pain and sorrow, he prayed for the souls of the corpses he met on his way. Having reached the top of the mountain, on his knees at the foot of the big cross, he was killed by a group of soldiers who fired bullets and arrows at him, and in the same way there died one after another the other bishops, priests, men and women religious, and various lay people of different ranks and positions. Beneath the two arms of the cross there were two angels each with a crystal aspersorium in his hand, in which they gathered up the blood of the martyrs and with it sprinkled the souls that were making their way to God. Regarding the so-called Third Secret of Fatima, what is generally called the Third Secret is in fact the third and final part of the full prophetic secret which the Blessed Virgin gave to the three child seers on July 13th, 1917 during the apparition. The other two sections of the secret which entail the vision of hell and the rise of communist Russia, were publicly revealed with the publication of Sister Lucia's memoirs back in the 1940s. The final part of the revelation remains in the possession of the Vatican and there is controversy whether or not it has been disclosed to the public fully. It was under the direct order of her bishop and with the assistance of Our Lady Sister Lucia wrote the third part of the secret on paper back in January 2nd, 1944. Our Lady, speaking to Sister Lucia, told her that it was God's will that the, she commit the secret to paper and entrust it to her bishop, through him to Pope Pius XII. At that time, the Blessed Virgin also indicated that this part of the secret was to be revealed to the faithful no later than 1960. Upon learning that her bishop was unwilling to open the envelope containing the secret, Sister Lucia made him promise, in the words of Canon Galamba, that the third secret would be opened and read to the world upon her death, or in 1960, whichever would happen first. If her bishop died first, it was agreed that the secret would be confided to the Cardinal Patriarch of Lisbon, Despite the agreement that the secret was in fact delivered to the Vatican where it had remained undisclosed to the public for over 50 years. Since 1960, when after reading the secret, Pope John XXIII decided not to reveal the contents publicly. There had been growing speculation concerning what it contained. While in the past, speculation often identified the secret with all sorts of cataclysms and world catastrophes and disasters, 
More recent scholarship has indicated that it is most likely concerns the widespread chaos, confusion and loss of faith that has gripped the Roman Catholic Church over the last three and a half decades. In an interview conducted in November 1984, then known as Cardinal Joseph Ratzinger, now better known as Pope Benedict XVI, confirmed that, with the Pope's permission, he had read the secret and that it contained, in his words, a radical call to conversion, the absolute gravity of history, the dangers threatening the faith and the life of a Christian, and therefore the world, and also the importance of the last times. The Cardinal went on to explain that, if it is not published, it is to avoid confusing religious prophecy with sensationalism. But the things contained in the third secret, or the third part of the secret, correspond to what has been announced in scripture and are confirmed by many other Marian apparitions. There has been such controversy over the decades regarding this third part of the secret. Sensationalism, conspiracy theories, all kinds of things which only bring confusion in the end. So why did it take so long until finally it was revealed? Well, John Paul II seems to be the main link as to why finally it got revealed. As we can see in the image, there are many things to interpret in a symbolic sense, but the main thing to notice straight away is the Pope himself being shot. What this stirs up amongst the people is in fact that by May 13th, 1981, the date of the anniversary of Our Lady's first apparition in Fatima on May 13th, 1917, John Paul II, while attending to the crowds around St. Peter's Square, was shot and wounded by an assassin. It was on his uh, hospital bed in recovery that he began to think more about it and he actually once in recovery, he asked for the third secret to uh, be given to him in the contained envelope at the Vatican Archives. From then, he opened up the investigation through uh, the appointed cardinals and bishops, and from then, it quickly progressed to Our Lady's wishes. The following readings I will now read out are excerpts from the Vatican's own publication regarding Fatima, the secrets, and finally, its public revelation. In the year 2000, marking the 80th anniversary since the apparitions of Our Lady of Fatima, Pope John Paul II visited the shrine and together after the Holy Mass he instructed Cardinal Angelo Sodano, the Secretary of State, to reveal the third part of the secret publicly. The following are excerpts of that speech. The text contains a prophetic vision similar to those found in sacred scripture, which do not describe photographically the details of future events, but synthesize and compress against a single background facts which extend through time in an unspecified succession and duration. As a result, the text must be interpreted in a symbolic key. The vision of Fatima concerns, above all, the war waged by atheistic systems against the Church and Christians, and it describes the immense suffering endured by the witnesses of the faith in the last century of the second millennium. It is an interminable way of the cross led by the popes of the 20th century. According to the interpretation of the Little Shepherds, which was also confirmed recently by Sister Lucia, the bishop clothed in white who prays for all the faithful is the Pope. As he makes his way with great difficulty towards the cross, amid the corpses of those who were martyred, the bishops, priests, men and women religious and many lay people, he too falls to the ground, apparently dead under a hail of gunfire. After the assassination attempt of 13th of May 1981, 
It appeared evident that it was a mother's hand that guided the bullet's path, enabling the Pope in his throes to halt at the threshold of death. On the occasion of a visit to Rome by then Bishop of Liaria Fatima, the Pope decided to give him the bullet which had remained in the jeep after the assassination attempt so that it might be kept in the shrine. By the bishop's decision, the bullet was later set in the crown of the statue of Our Lady of Fatima. The success of events of 1989 led both the Soviet Union and in a number of countries of Eastern Europe to the fall of the communist regimes which promoted atheism. For this too, His Holiness offers heartfelt thanks to the Most Holy Virgin. In other parts of the world, however, attacks against the Church and against Christians, with the burden of suffering they bring, tragically continue. Even if the events of which the third part of the secret of Fatima refers now seem part of the past, Our Lady's call to conversion and penance, issued at the start of the 20th century, remain timely and urgent today. The Lady of the Message seems to read the signs of the times, the, sign, the signs of our time, with special insight. The insistent invitation of Mary Most Holy to penance is nothing but the manifestation of her maternal concern for the fate of human family in need of conversion and forgiveness. In various interviews it is reported that what Sister Lucia stated regarding the third secret. It's in the Gospel and in the Book of the Apocalypse. Read them. She particularly noted apparently through chapters 8 through 13 of the Book of Revelation known as the Book of the Apocalypse, the last book in the Bible, especially chapter 13 which specifically concerns the rise of the Antichrist. Studies of the Third Secret build a powerful and compelling case that the Third Secret itself is a grave warning of apostasy within the Catholic faith and a serious indictment of those in the church hierarchy who have promoted dissent and un outright heresy. I'd like to wrap up now based on what we've already covered. Fatima itself can make me continue to put more and more evidence together and this, believe it or not, is a shortened version. So the last questions we have to ask at the end of this as we wrap up for now and before continuing on with more pieces of the jigsaw over the century at other Marian apparition sites, let's ask these questions based on what's already been presented to us. Did Russia spread its errors? Yes, it did, through communism and atheistic teachings, which was highlighted. Through the persecution of the church throughout most of the 20th century, before and after World War II, and the Soviet Empire, as already stated, wiped out millions of souls and tens of thousands of those in church uh, services. Did the prophecies foretold eventually happen? As already said, when Boston, based on those facts, yes they did. But what was more key was the strange light foretold that would happen before the Second World War. That happened in January 1938, as Sister Lucia saw herself from her convent. It also occurred during the reign of Pope Pius XI, which was foretold. And of course, as we know in recent years, with the third part of the secret revealed, the Pope himself being shot on the feast day of the first apparition of Fatima on May 13th, 1981. Yes, there are too many key evidence just with those things for anyone to turn a blind eye to. It would be ignorant to do so. Now the question remains, has Russia converted and what is still to happen? People like myself, not so long ago, without knowing more of the key facts and just picking up parts from here and there over time, and listening to media of the West and the propaganda brought out against Russia, you would assume Russia is still the dark country 
it once was in the Cold War era in the Soviet Empire times. But as Our Lady asked, John Paul II eventually fulfilled, according to the Vatican itself, Lucia confirmed that his consecration of Russia and the world to the Immaculate Heart of Mary in 1984 did occur, and soon afterwards the fall of the Soviet Empire occurred. Since the late 80s, through the 90s and until now, and especially in recent years, it is clear and evident that Russia is converting back to Christianity, while at the same time in the West it seems to be falling away much more. I'll cover this in other videos, but I do believe now with a little more research that Russia itself has converted. Many out there still state that it hasn't and they're still waiting for further things to happen. But remember now, if it has converted and it's the West that are falling away further from God, Russia will be that scourge of the nations, a tool used by God to punish the world for its crimes. This is the difference. Also, what is still to happen? It's my personal belief that World War Three is going to occur very soon. And uh, as I have said for at least 10 years or so since getting more in tuned with Marian apparitions, which I'm now presenting to you, I've said for quite some time that 2017 would be a real year to look at because of the 100th anniversary of Fatima. And look what Fatima contains. Now in Medjugorje, where another video I'll hope to produce very soon, Our Lady is appearing there now and has stated, What I began in Fatima, I will finish here in Medjugorje. That is a massive statement. I do believe Russia is on the path of conversion, where the West has fallen further away. The great apostasy is still occurring. It's still going to get worse, perhaps. But God is cleaning out the house. The sins of the past have been brought to the surface and has been dealt with. It's a fact now we have to pray for our shepherds. We have to pray for the church and the guidance of humanity. Because if all the worst is still yet to come based on the sins of mankind, when everything occurs as it's supposed to, who will be ready and aware of it? Who will be understanding it? If it happens like a thief in the night and it comes without without any expectation, the confusion and the uproar and the chaos will be immeasurable. We have to keep praying as Our Lady has taught us through sacrifice and penance. She gave us the tools in order to avert many things, but mankind did not listen and everything came to pass as she stated it would. We have to pray for peace, we have to pray for the church, we have to pray for the guidance given to us from the Holy Spirit through the church. Pray for our shepherds. When all this confusion comes, when all the uproar is still to get worse, as I believe it will do, many, many, in fact the majority perhaps, will not understand what's happening and why it's happening. But you can't change a news channel now without seeing something's building up. China and Russia are the big key and the major figures when it comes to World War Three, as I'll show you in further videos to come. But I want to first state this is the major jigsaw piece is Fatima. And nextly I wish to go on to piecing another part together. So as time goes on with a few of these videos we will see the picture more clearly. So please stay tuned for the next part. And when we now arrive at the 1960s, that time period already predicted by Our Lady in Quito, Ecuador and in Fatima, everything we've covered so far to show the darkness of this era in the se just after the mid-20th century. She appeared yet again in a northern Spanish village of San Sebastian de Garabandal. <laughs> 